Welcome to the Plato Paradigm, a paradigm shift in reading Plato's dialogues. Episode 65, Euthyphro 14c to E. Euthyphro has just agreed that holiness is the episteme, understanding or knowledge, of sacrificing and praying. And Socrates now develops this idea. So, to sacrifice is to give presence to the gods, and to pray is to request from the gods. Yes, indeed, Socrates, the presence that gods receive from humans in sacrifice are usually bits of animals. Sometimes it can be an entire animal, only on very important occasions. Apart from sacrificing, humans also give presence to the gods if they have vowed something. I'll give you a statue or a temple if something happens to me which I want very much. I presume Socrates wouldn't mind this being included as well. The point is that humans give gods presents in the hope that then the gods will oblige in some way. Episteme ara aiteseos kai dosios theois hosiotes anee ek tututu logu panu kaloso Socrates sunekas ho epon so from this argument, holiness would be the episteme, understanding or knowledge, of asking and giving to the gods. While this is basically true, it sounds much more mercenary than praying and sacrificing. This doesn't seem to bother Euthyphro too much. You seem to have understood what I said quite well. Epithume tes garemi o file, tes ses sophias, kai prosecho nun aute, hoste u chamai pesetai, hotian epes. For I am desirous of your expertise, O friend, and I pay attention to it, so that whatever you say won't fall on the earth. In other words, nothing Euthyphro says will go to waste. But is Socrates really a fan of Euthyphro's expertise about holiness? It should be clear from the dialogue so far that Euthyphro has no idea what the holy is, and Socrates is far from impressed with whatever it is Euthyphro thinks he knows. This means that Socrates is lying when he says that he is desirous of Euthyphro's expertise, but this does not mean that he is mocking Euthyphro. He can lie and praise Euthyphro. He can flatter Euthyphro, all in order to get Euthyphro to be engaged in this conversation. When I say that Euthyphro has no idea about the holy, this is a slight exaggeration. He knows that it has something to do with the gods, and in particular, it has something to do with Eusebea, respect towards the gods. It might be said that Euthyphro has little respect for the gods if he treats them in this mercenary fashion, if you think you can get the gods to do nice things to you if you do nice things to them, doesn't sound very respectful. But if we think of the old system of patronage, where patrons obviously will do things for their clients, while the clients obviously have to do things for their patrons in order to be clients. That's the whole point of the patron-client system. Now, is there a patron-client system in Greece? It's not so clear as the system in Rome, but it looks like there was some sort of system going on. Even in the introduction to this dialogue, we find two types of subservience in the bondsman of Euthyphro, who murdered the household member of his father. 
Interestingly, Euthyphro himself has considered the relationship between humans and gods as one of slaves and masters. And slaves don't give presents to their masters. And masters certainly don't do things which are good in return for presents to their slaves. The client-patron relationship is a better fit, which is not to say that this is exactly the way the Greeks perceived their relationship with the gods. Stating the relationship in these mercenary terms, the way Socrates has done, may be a bit too blunt for most of them. Socrates continues, Alamoi lexon tis haute he hu peresies di tois theois, aitentefes autus kai di donai e keinois, egoge. But tell me, what is this service to the gods? Do you claim that they, that is the humans, request and give to them, to those, in other words, the gods? I do indeed. To request and to give have been repeated now several times in different forms. We've had requesting and giving, and now we have the infinitives in reported speech. Arunu toge orthos aiten an ee, hon de ometha parikenon tauta autus aiten alati. But wouldn't the requesting correctly be to request from them those things which we need from them. What else? Kai auto di donai orthos hon ekenoi tun hanu si de ominoi parhemon tauta ekenoi sao antidores thai. And the same thing with giving correctly. To give us presents in return to them, the gods, those things which they happen to need from us. This might work in a transaction between humans where both sides exchange and receive things which they need, but when we're talking about humans and gods, humans give presents to the gods in exchange for things which humans need. The gods don't need anything which they can't take or do for themselves. Until now, Euthyphro has been talking about things which please the gods, not things which the gods need. With this argument, however, Socrates has introduced a false equivalency. The gods give to humans things which humans need, therefore in return the humans must give things which the gods need. It sounds good, even if it's false. If he had left it there, Socrates may have found that Euthyphro might object. So he adds, Ugar pu technikon gan e doro foren didonta to tauta hon uden detai. And Euthyphro says, Aletheleges, o Socrates. So this last edition has convinced Euthyphro. And what is it? For I suppose giving a gift wouldn't be technikon, it wouldn't be to do with a techne, if someone gives to someone those things which that other someone doesn't need. You say true things, Socrates. So, after all this time, Socrates has finally arrived at techne. Actually, the episteme of sacrificing and praying is really only the theoretical side of praying and sacrificing. And that itself would really have to be a techne if there is a good result. Notice that Socrates is implying that there has to be a good result to giving a present. It has to be giving the sort of thing that the other person needs. We might suspect that Socrates is attempting to manipulate Euthyphro into thinking about the end goal of what it is that he's doing. What's the point of sacrificing? What's the point of praying? And what's even the point of prosecuting your father? Well, in that case, we do know that that is to remove miasma. But why sacrifice and pray 
for euthyphro, it's the same thing. It's in order to remove any fear that the gods will not give us what we need from them. But does euthyphro ever think why the gods care what we do? What do the gods need that they get from us? Socrates is now as blunt as he possibly can be. Emporike aratis anee o euthyphron techne he hosiotes the ois kain thropois parallelon. Emporike e utos he dion soi onomadzen. Euthyphro isn't pleased. So what is it Socrates says? So holiness would seem to be a commercial techne between gods and men. Commercial if it is more pleasing to you to call it thus, aluden hedion emoige e metun chane alithes on. But nothing is more pleasing to me if it doesn't happen to be true. It's quite common in a Platonic dialogue for Socrates to hold back on a term, but then just before he uses it, he introduces it with another nearby term and in this case he has just used techne but before that he used technikon an adjective pertaining to a techne as if this is preparing the ground which makes it sound as though Socrates knows that Euthyphro doesn't usually treat the holy as a techne he is proud of his episteme, his knowledge or understanding, so-called, of mythology. But as Euthyphro himself has said, his relationship to the gods is more that of a slave to masters. And slaves are not normally considered to have a techne of servitude. Is Socrates correct when he portrays the emporike techne as good to both sides. I would have thought, I'm not sure about this because we don't really have this in other texts, that the emporike techne, the, the art or craft or skill of merchants is to make money from what they sell. And it could include making the product but then knowing how to sell it at a profit. That would be what I would think was the emporike techne. But Socrates has made it something which is good for both sides. It is good for the merchant, but it is also good for the customer. The customer receives what he needs from the merchant. And actually, what does the merchant receive from the customer? Does he receive what he needs? In a way he does, because it's simply money, or usually it's money, unless they're bartering. But if the gods are merchants, they're doing a very bad job because they're getting nothing back from humans apart from a few pieces of animals, or in the best case, a few statues or a temple. <laughs>